Welcome to today's stretch. It's five of ten today. Now, five of ten means we're also getting closer to the end of this lockdown, hopefully. Anyway, I'm also hoping that you're doing these stretching sessions because they really do make a difference. Like anything, it just requires some consistency, some persistence, and know that you will move better. Absolutely. All right, so... What we're going to do today is we're doing uh, foam rolling. So I'm going to introduce you to the foam roller. Most people or anybody who's done a bit of rehab, they probably own one of these. I'm going to say go get it, dust it off and uh, get well acquainted with it. The reason why we foam roll is to release tight muscles basically. It's to also bring back some good blood flow. When you bring new blood flow to muscles, you are bringing a whole big batch of new oxygen and uh, nutri nutrient as well to the muscle. So it's very hydrating for the muscles to put them under the compression of the foam roller on your body weight. Uh, and the beauty of it is you're in control. So you can control how much weight you actually put through the foam roller. Now, it releases the fascia and a little bit about fascia is it is like a big continuous cobweb throughout your body. I'm going to talk more about that as we get rolling so that uh, we are more time effective and efficient. So what we're going to do, we're going to start at our calves and just work our way up. I'm going to show you how to use the foam roller for all the body parts and then you can decide where you need it the most and spend more time right there. So here we go kids, we're just going to do the calves, I'm putting both calves on and I am just rolling forward and back. Now I'm going from my ankle all the way up to just behind my knee because your calves cross your knee joint. So you want to extend it the whole way. Now what we're doing here is we are going to be increasing some blood flow. So you can almost use a foam roller to warm up your muscles. So if you're going to do something very sports specific, let's say you're going to go sprinting, you really want to warm up your calves, your hammies, your quads. And so you can spend a bit of time doing this pre-warm up. Now if you want to maximize or sorry increase the pressure going through, you would place the other leg on top of. So I've just put my right leg on top of my left leg and now I have more weight going through the um, like more pressure on top of my foam roller. You'll find areas that hurt more than others. You can actually angle your leg around a little bit, rotate it so that you can find those sore spots. And they're the spots you might want to hang on a little bit more and just do a little bit of backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards on that sore area. And then you might even just want to do a static hold. I've got a sore spot right here on the lateral part of my gastroc, so the nice big chunky uh, calf muscle. And so I'm just going to spend some time under compression, so I'm just hanging on it right now. And then I'll start doing a little bit of um, backwards and forwards, and then I'll continue doing a full roll. So once you've spent some time on your calves, we're going to move to our hamstrings. Now, the hamstring obviously goes from your bottom. It actually starts or originates from the ischial tuberosity, which is your sit bones. You know when you go and you sit on someone's lap, I don't know how often you do that, but when you're sitting on someone's lap, have you ever heard them say, ah, oh, you've got a bony bum? Well, they're actually talking about your ischial tuberosity, the two sit bones that are right there. Well, your hamstrings originate off there, in case you did not know. That's where they start from. And then they run straight down the back of your leg, all the way down, and they cross over the knee joint. So the hamstring is made up particularly of uh, two muscle groups, or let's say three. Biceps femoris, which is a nice big one, and then you've got semitendinosus and semimembranosus. So your bicep femoris comes and attaches on the outside, semitendon, semimem on the inside of the knee. The, um, I'm now rolling both of them. It's a lot of information. You don't need to know all of it. You just basically need to know where the hamstring runs from and to. And then again, you can 
maximize the pressure by placing both uh, one leg on top of the other one, yeah? So now I'm just pretty much rolling my right hamstring. And it's quite tight through the middle part of the belly. Now the only problem with a foam roller is it's a lot of pressure through your shoulders. So I'm you know, supporting my body weight through my shoulders. You can alleviate a little bit of that by putting the foot on the floor and then you're just rolling up and down again. You take a little bit of pressure off the foam roller. So if you're really sore, you'll probably want to do this anyway. And this is how we can control how much pressure goes through the foam roller as well, by using the assistance of that foot. What we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the ITB. Now, ITB can actually make grown men cry. <laughs> Why do I find that funny? I don't even know, because grown men do cry. So in order to do your ITB, which runs on the outside of your thigh, glute max inserts onto ITB, he comes straight down, he crosses the knee joint as well. Now your ITB stands for iliotibial band and it's dense connective tissue. So it doesn't have the same texture um, as muscle and uh, it's not as vascular, so it doesn't have the same sort of blood flow. Now ITB, you're going to find that it's going to be quite tender, more than likely down at the insertion, down the bottom. And then again, it'll probably be a bit more tender as you're a bit lateral and when you get to the top as well, towards the top. Find those sore spots, don't avoid them, and you need to go backwards and forwards over them. Now, with ITB, you may not be able to have both feet on top like this because that's maximum pressure. So depending on your um, pain tolerance, depending on how sadistic you are to yourself, you may want to place one leg here just to take a little bit of pressure off. Now, mine's particularly tight down at the bottom towards the knee, and uh, I'm going to spend some time just hanging there. Oh! It feels so good. <laughs> Ow! Actually, it's a fine line between pleasure and pain. We know that. Roll backwards and forwards. Enjoy it. Ow! You know what? It's going to feel amazing when you come off it. So I said to you I'm going to talk about fascia. I'm going to go back to my hamstrings for a little bit. You can do this too. Come back to your hammies. Uh, fascia is dense connective tissue and it's like a cobweb, one big continuous cobweb from your soles of your feet right up to the crown of your head. Every single muscle bundle, muscle spindle, muscle fiber, every organ is uh, suspended in fascia. And fascia also compartmentalizes all of our muscles. So when we talk about your hamstrings, which I just did, they're a group of muscles. If you then break that down further, you've got your biceps femoris, your semitendinosus, and your membranosus. So the fascia then compartmentalizes all of those different muscle groups. And while we're talking about fascia, now can you imagine if fascia is tight, you need to get all those items I just listed, muscle bundle, muscle spindle, muscle fiber, um, individual muscle groups. You need to get all your organs and stuff them into a sock that's too small. Stuff them in there. Well, guess what happens? It's constricted. It's not going to get the blood flow that it needs, is it? So when your fascia is tight, now I'm getting to my point, long story. When uh, fascia is tight, it creates tightness to our everything else, yeah? So you're going to be restricted in range of motion, movement. It can cause pain. It causes generally dysfunction in your whole body. That's why I want you to get your foam roller out, dust him off and start using him. I'm going to do my other ITB simply because it needs doing so badly. So remember ITB runs on the outside of your leg. I am now, ow. It's super, super tight. And also depending what you do for activity could make you even more prone to being tight. So I do lots of cycling, um, 50Ks at a time, and it's a high repetition 
uh, going across my knee joint. You can imagine if you're a runner, same thing right here. Um, that's a lot of tension flicking over uh, an anchor point, one of your bony projections down here past your knee. For things like tendonitis, that's what we develop if we don't deal with this. I always believe prevention is better than cure. So you should be doing this every single day. Now we're gonna flip it over onto our quad. So here we go, your quad runs down the whole front of your thigh, yeah? From your hip bone all the way down past your knee. He crosses both joints. At the moment I'm doing both quads. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get very brave and I'm gonna put one leg on top of the other. So all the weight now is going through my left quad. And I'm just gonna even shift my body weight a little bit forward, a little bit back until I can find those sore spots that really need it. I found a spot here and I'm just gonna spend some time here. And so that's your quad. Or take it right up high to the origin. So your quad comes off here, yeah, on your hip bone. You can run across the tendon if you're tight. It will feel like um, a chunky cord, uh, it won't be very pliable. And then what we do is we just spend time rolling on that quad. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna move to our adductors. Now these are generally tender. The adductor group is this group here. It runs from the inside of your thigh, comes off your lesser, um, I'll think of that name, trochanter of the femur, it's on your thigh, big thigh bone, the biggest, longest muscle in the, sorry, bone, your femur is the biggest, longest, heaviest bone in your whole body. So that's your adductor group there, it crosses the knee joint, one of the muscles do, there's a whole group of muscles that make up the adductors. What we're gonna do kids is we are going to kick our leg out to the side and we're then gonna roll it from the knee all the way up to the groin, all the way up to the groin. Keep going, keep going a little bit more, ow. It's gonna be quite tender on that tenderness unit, the tenderness unit of the muscle, yeah. Woo, so tendons attach muscle to bone, ligaments attach bone to bone. Just some more useful information. Do with it whatever you like, <laughs> okay? Um, but in the tendon part, you, again, it's like the ITV. It's avascular. It doesn't have that same great blood flow as muscle. So tears in muscles versus tears in tendons tend to take a little bit longer to heal in the tendon. The muscle tears tend to heal a bit quicker. They have a great blood flow. I'm, I'm concentrating up high because that's where I'm really sore. Okay, that's the part that I can't ignore because, ouch, it needs it. And then you take it all the way down the full length again, so all the way up. Now, when you go super slow, just nice and slow, that's very hydrating, so hydrating for your muscle, yeah? So if you can imagine, right, I'm very visual. So if you get a sponge, have a um, spillage of liquid on your kitchen bench. Get a sponge and squeeze it first, like so. Then put the sponge over the top of that liquid and let it go. It's gonna go, it's gonna suck up the liquid, right? That's what this is almost doing to your muscles, imagine. So as you very slowly compress, yeah, you've got your body weight on top of the foam roller, you're performing a compression. And as you come off it, it's like, it's doing the same thing. It's taking a big intake of nice new blood. This is why it's so good for you. Okay, so now moving on. I have just done, we, we, you and me have just done our calves, we've done our hamstrings, we've done our quads, we've done our ITV that runs up the side of the leg. You're gonna go back to any ones that hurt the most. We're gonna get onto our glute now. Everyone could do this, everyone can benefit from this. So with your glute, you just roll backwards and forwards. I'm just going over that ischial tuberosity and I can actually feel, ouch, the tendon of my, <laughs> ooh, what is that? Ooh, good 
be piriformis. No, piriformis is a bit higher. Um, I'm feeling a tendon flick across. So I know that I particularly need to spend some time releasing my glutes. So I'll just do this. It feels quite nice. You can then go uh, by putting that knee up here and opening it up. You sit on there, pop one knee over the top and then roll forward and back, yeah? You just can get different aspects of your glutes. Uh, again, your glutes are made up of um, lots of different muscles. You've got your glute max, which is the biggest individual muscle in the body. Do with that what you like. Um, and then you've got your glute min, your glute med, they help with internal, external rotation. You've got your piriformis. So if anybody suffers with things like sciatic pain, quite often it's um, a really tight piriformis where um, the sciatic nerve has to pass through layers of your glutes and he can get impinged by that piriformis muscle if it's tight. So doing this kind of um, activity is gold. You can also get a nice hard ball. Uh, you want something harder than a tennis ball because you imagine if you sit on a tennis ball or if I put my weight on a tennis ball, it's just gonna crush, right? So you want a hard ball, like a softball. It's bigger in surface area. Um, and you want to sit on that ball, just one moment. I do have a tennis ball somewhere. Mika might have taken it. Um, we have a poodle. I think the poodle took it. Anyway, imagine you've got a ball, sit on it here, and then you just roll around on it. Just roll around and find your sore spots. Same thing. This is all my fascial release. That's what we're doing, releasing all of the connective tissue and bringing got nice good blood flow, nice good nutrition to the area. Okay, one more one we're going to do now is our lats all up underneath our armpit. So under here, you've got your subscap. You can put your finger on there. It's not a muscle that gets touched very often. So if you put your finger up in there and now close this hand over it, pinch it, Bring your arm down, and then you can just do some nice little external rotations while you're, I'm pinching, I'm just pinching that, getting pressure in there, and now squeeze it like that, yeah. And then you can just go from internally rotated, internally to externally, just doing that action. Wow, it feels good, but bad. You know one of those, oh no, please stop, no, please keep going. It's kind of that feeling. <laughs> okay, but we're going to go and release all through our, under the armpit and our lats. Lats run a very big portion from your back right up under your armpit. So what we're going to do is we are going to come down sideline, place the foam roller underneath there, and we're just going to roll forward and back. Oh man, this one's very tender. You can even just hang here and just do some nice little external rotations on there. So you're rolling backwards and forwards over subscap, lats. You're probably getting some posterior cuff as well, the rotator cuff. You've got four muscles that make up your rotator cuff and uh, you'd be getting at least three of them right now. Oh yeah, quite nice. Then roll up and down again, roll up and down. That's it. We, mamma mia, whoa, that's a good one. You're gonna love this. There we go. Come back into some external rotation. Whoa, if that really hurts, just stay there for a bit. Hang there, hold, breathe, think with thoughts, smile. Because did you know also when you smile, a physiological change occurs, feel good hormones are released. It's true. It's absolute fact, people. So have you ever heard the saying, fake it till you make it? Nothing wrong with that, my friend. I do it all the time. <laughs> okay, other arm. I'm doing the other one just because I know I'm sore from a training session that I did yesterday. Thanks, YB2. Oh my God, thanks, Lindsay. I'm cursing you today, sunshine. We did 150 um, sit-ups, 150 push-ups, 150 overhead 
um, uh, ball raises, ball presses, 150 overhead ball presses, and 150 squats together with skipping and some sort of sprints. So I am all over sore today. Very effective workout, very simple, cooly dooly. So this is as much for me as it is for you. <laughs> Now, I hope you've really enjoyed that. We're going to stop it right there. We've done a pretty much all over head to toe foam rolling session. I've given you some good information about the benefits of releasing your fascia. Yeah, so we've just done a lot of myofascial release. And whilst this does not replace your massage therapist, and being a massage therapist, I'd never say that it will replace it, but uh, it's a very good way to mimic and mock what we do in a session so you know we'll get you and we'll come up your muscle with our forearm and uh, we'll come up nice and slow imagine that's what this is doing so it's a really good in-between session um, addition to your maintenance program and in fact it makes our job a bit easier yeah so today i'm going to leave you with probably a song you've heard me play before in this screen day because guess what my repertoire is pretty much limited unless I have um, my music in front of me or oh, actually I do know Jolene I shouldn't have told you but this is Jolene no I'm lying here we go Jolene kids I hope you've enjoyed it it's been 22 minutes in total a um, bit of talk time I tried to talk you through your stretches while we were doing them just to make it a bit more time um, effective and efficient go get your foam roller remember you can buy these from Kmart for seven bucks do not go and purchase a foam roller from Rebel for sixty dollars it's not necessary because after all all as it is, is dense foam. That's all it is, yeah? So you don't need to get your $60 version. <laughs> I've been Michelle, and you've been awesome. Thank you so much. That is five of ten down.